morning. Today is the umpteenth day since our classrooms have been closed. That means we haven't been able to share snacks at school, we haven't been able to play sports, and really, the hardest part has probably been being apart from each other. Yeah, doing my work from home is not really tough. Listening to radio programs and keeping up with teachers through WhatsApp is all right, but I also miss my friends. Well, we have great news to announce. With this special TV program dedicated to us kids, we can be in it together. Our friends can all tune in at the same time, learn about the zoo, drawing, and other cool things, and we can share our progress with each other. Social distancing may have us apart, but virtual learning is bringing us together. Let's jump on into what is ahead for us today. In it together! We kick off this morning with Animal of the Day. In Belize, we can boast that we are the best little zoo in the world. And so, let's visit our Belize Zoo virtually to learn about our unique Animal of the Day. There is no need to debate. Belize has the best little zoo in the world. With over 200 animals, and they're all kept in their natural habitat. Since forever, taking a trip to this zoo meant physically coming here. But I'm here to make your job easier. I'm Daniil, and I'll be bringing an animal a day to your living room. We will learn what they eat, how big or small they grow, and all the little features that makes them special. I am a dog lover, but being a mommy to a dog does not count. So joining me will be actual zookeepers who take care of these animals daily. Now, grab your notepad and be sure to allow your little brother and sister to join you as we will be having lots of fun and adventures right here at the Belize Zoo. So guys, today's animal, man, he's a beauty. He's the largest parrot that we have here in Belize. And hands down, he's the most beautiful. Can you guys hear him? Listen well. Think of that song. He's very loud. Guys, can you come and guess what animal we're doing today? If you guess the Scarlet Baca, give yourself a round of applause because you are right. With me today is Miss Wade. You probably met her before. But as usual, she'll be introducing the animal and giving us all the fat we need to learn about these beautiful birds. Guys, we're back again. And of course, we're joined by Miss Wade, who will be giving us all that we need to know about these beautiful birds. Miss Wade, I'm happy to have you back with us. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Great. So, can you tell us about these beautiful birds known as the scarlet macaw? Sure. The scarlet macaw, scientifically known as the ara macaw, right? They are seed dispersers and they are the largest parrot of the nine species that we have in the country of Belize. Great. So they are basically a bigger, more beautiful version of a parrot. Indeed. They are the largest of the nine species that we have here. Okay. So what is, what is the problem that we're having with scarlet macaws in Belize? Because of their beautiful colors, red, yellow, and blue, they are being poached. And as a result of that, they are endangered, meaning that just a few of these birds are left in the country. Poaching is when these birds are taken out of their nests and are illegally taken into other countries for tourism, for their feathers, or for whatever it is to make money. Miss Wade, how long do these birds live? These birds can actually live 25 to 30 years in captivity. And where do they live? They live in the high canopy in the forest, specifically in the Chickaboo area of our country. Can you tell us a bit about what they eat? These birds are seed disperser, meaning that they eat seeds, nuts, fruits, vegetables. Okay, so they like to eat pepitas? Yes, indeed, they love pepitas. Great. So can you tell us a bit about the size of these birds? I see they have big wings. Can you tell us their wingspan? Absolutely. The wingspan can be three to four feet. 
Wow, those are big birds indeed. Yes, these birds are highly intelligent. They actually can talk, meaning they can mimic words. So, as we will do every week, can you tell me one fun fact about the scarlet macaws? Did you know that scarlet macaws have the emotion of a two-year-old and they can get quite cranky and throw tantrum? So hi guys, with us we have today Miss Shania. And Miss Shania is a bird keeper. Can you tell us a bit about what you do, Miss Shania? So basically, I help to take care of all the birds here at the zoo. Um, and that includes the fruit birds like the macaws and other parrots, and the birds of prey like the king vultures behind us, and other raptors like owls and the harp eagle. Great, and so who do we have with us here today? This is Ranger, the scarlet macaw. And why is his name Ranger? So his name is Ranger um, in honor of the FCD Rangers that found him and rescued him and um, they found him as a baby and took him to the BWRC clinic. Great, so why is Ranger in the zoo? Um, Ranger was actually given to the zoo because he can no longer fly. He was born with a congenital problem where he's missing some of the feathers on one of his wings that prevent him from flying. Okay, so Ranger is missing some feathers, mm -hmm. so he cannot fly. He cannot fly. And what does Ranger eat? I notice you're feeding him. Um, these are pepitos. Um, it's one of his favorite treats, but we don't give him a lot of seeds just because they have a lot of oil and it could cause um, liver problems like fatty liver. But they eat fruits, they eat nuts, they're important for seed dispersal, things like that. And how old is Ranger? Ranger is a little bit over one, um, okay. but not two yet. Still, still about a year and a half. Great. So there you have it, guys. This is Ranger. And Ranger is always available at the zoo. He's not in display, but his friends are. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys. I hope you were listening to Ranger and his zookeeper, Miss Shania, because they were a lot of fun. The question of the day is, how did Ranger get his name? Think about it. How did Ranger get his name? So guys, Ranger got his name because he was rescued by rangers in the Chicken Bull Forest. Ranger was born without his feathers, which means that he can't fly. So the rangers rescued him and brought him right over to the Little Bully Zoo. He is not an exhibit, but his friends are. So be sure to come over. Thank you for joining me for another day of Animal of the Day. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed spending your time with me because I definitely enjoyed spending my time with you. The Belize Zoo is a great place to pass time. It's open every day from 8.30 a.m. through to 5 p.m. Be sure to ask your parents to bring you over because it is even better in person. They have a lot of awesome animals and you'll get an unforgettable experience. So guys, remember, the more you read, the more you know. And the more you learn, the more places you'll go. I'm Daniil, and I'm out. Wicked, the scarlet macaw is one of the most beautiful birds there is. We are a blessed and lucky country, and obviously the most beautiful. That's not even up for arguing. Guess what? If you have a special animal at the zoo that you want to feature, let us know with adult supervision. You can visit In It Together Belize on Facebook and comment under today's episode. We will take a little commercial break now and then we will return with our drawing segment. It will be really fun and easy to follow. If you want to be in it together with us, you should use this commercial break to track down a paper to draw on, a pencil or pen to draw with and some crayons or markers to add colors to your creation. Got it? Be right back. Welcome back to In It Together, our dedicated children's hour on national television and Facebook, allowing us to hang out and learn with each other virtually. Creating our own piece of art is fun. Once again, Miss Jazz will be our drawing teacher, and I can promise you that she is a pro. If you have your material together, you'll be able to draw along with us and make a masterpiece to be proud of. 
easy as one, two, three. Let's do this. Hi guys, welcome back to Let's Draw, where I teach you guys how to draw the coolest things. My name is Jazz, and following right along drawing our favorite characters from our favorite shows, today we will be drawing, drum roll please, that's right, Gumball from the amazing world of Gumball. Woo! All right guys, so last episode we did Jake the Dog from Adventure Time, and just like Jake the Dog, Gumball is a animal, right? Gumball is actually a cat and he is a blue cat, so I'm very excited for that today because blue is one of my favorite colors. I think I mentioned that to you guys last time, all right? So let's get into this drawing. Remember guys, you will be needing something to draw on, something to draw with, and something to color with, okay? So just get your stuff ready. Today I will be drawing with my trusty marker. Let's get into it. All right guys, so we're gonna start off with Gumball's neck. And to start that, we're gonna do one little line here, almost in the center of the paper. We're gonna start with one short line, okay? So for his head, it's like a big open circle. We're gonna go all the way around, come around, and then we're gonna stop right there. Because what we're gonna do is put his cheeks, and Gumball has some huge cheeks, all right? So we need all the space for that. So we're gonna come, do another large circle, come around almost close to his neck, and then stop right there, giving him some space. All right? So next we're gonna do Gumball's large circle eyes. So one huge circle here, that's the first eye, and another huge circle right here. Take your time, guys. Don't worry if your circles aren't perfect, just do your best, and I'm sure your drawing is gonna come out spectacular. So we're gonna put in his pupils now, which are two smaller circles right in the center of those larger circles. So that's the first one, the second one. And then we're gonna go ahead and shade both of them in. Next, we're gonna do Gumball's ears that are two triangles at the top of his head. One is larger than the other because Gumball's head is actually at an angle. So we do the large triangle here, that's one ear. And they're gonna do a smaller one right here, that's the second ear. They're so cute, aren't they? All right, guys, so now we're gonna draw his mouth and his nose in one. So they, it, this actually resembles a little teardrop that's like at a slant. So we're gonna kinda bring our hands this way, bring it like this, that's our teardrop around, and then close it right back. See, easy, okay? So we put in his little nose. And then we're gonna do one line here to complete that. There we go, Gumball's mouth and nose in one, okay? So Gumball is a cat, like I told you guys, and what do cats have? Whiskers, that's right. So Gumball has two whiskers on this side of his face, and he has three on the other. So we're just gonna put in his whiskers. One, two, three, there we go. All right guys, so now we're gonna draw Gumball's arm and sleeve. And his arm actually resembles an open hook. Can you guys guess what letter resembles an open hook? Uh, if I put my hand like this, can you, do you think you can see it? Can you see it? It's a C, that's right guys. So a C actually resembles an open hook. So we're gonna be drawing the top of the C, and then we're gonna be drawing a straight line for Gumball's arm, okay? So we're gonna start here with our C, with our hook. There we go, that's it. And then we're gonna come down with a straight line. That's for the first part of his arm. Then we're gonna go in here and right below where we started our C, we're gonna do the line, they're not connected. Leave some space. And we're gonna do our second straight line, okay? So Gumball's little paw also resembles a little open C. So we're gonna come here and draw our cute little open C. Stop right there, right? That's our perfect C. But now we're gonna keep it going and we're gonna round it and connect it back to that straight line. There we go, that's his arm. So we put two lines right here, one, two. Those are for his paws, his fingers, okay? Then we're gonna do two lines right here because we're putting in his sleeve at the same time. Gumball always wears a sweater, guys. He changes his clothes sometimes in the shows when he and Darwin are doing crazy things. Oh, I almost forgot to mention Darwin to you guys. So Gumball has a best friend and brother and his name is Darwin. So just like Finn and Jake, Darwin and Gumball are best friends and they also go on some of the craziest adventures. But just like Finn and Jake again, they have the best time, always. It's coming! 
All right, guys. So now we're gonna keep it going by drawing Gumball's torso. So we're gonna come here from his neck and draw another straight line right down. Stop right there, don't draw it too far, okay? And then we're gonna attach a little curve right here. That's for his lower body, that's so that we can draw his torso and his pants, all right? So we're gonna put a line right in there for his, that is to separate his shirt and his pants. We're gonna put in his collar. That's one line here, one line here. We have his collar. Now we're gonna do his punt. It's a little curve, like a semicircle, right there under that other line that we just placed. And then two straight lines coming down. There you go. So now we have Gumball's entire head and his torso and his clothes. So now we only have a couple things left, guys. I hope you're following with me and I hope you're enjoying this drawing, okay? So now we're gonna put in his feet. So we're gonna draw three straight lines for Gumball's feet and we're gonna start with one in the middle. So we bring that first line down. We draw one on the left and one on the right. There we go. So just like Gumball's paws, his feet also look like open seas, except there is a flat line on the bottom, okay? So let me show you what I mean. We're gonna do an open C and we're gonna stop. Now we're gonna insert our straight line. There you go. And you're gonna connect it to the line in the middle. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, okay? So an open C, stop right there, and our straight line, Gumball's feet. So now all we have to do is put two lines for his pants cuff, okay? So one line here, one here, and then another up top. There we go. And last but not least, Gumball's cute little tail because like I told you guys, he's a cat. Do you guys like cats? I love cats, but I have to say my favorite animal would probably be dogs. Like, I love dogs and I love puppies and I think that they're so cute. I wish that I could own 20. <laughs> All right guys, so we're gonna do Gumball's tail. His tail actually resembles a little sausage. We're gonna put that right here behind his paw. We have his tail. Oh, I almost forgot his eyebrows. How can I forget his eyebrows? We all have eyebrows, of course. Can you guys touch your eyebrows? Like, never forget these things on your face, okay? Like I did for Gumball. So now his eyebrows look like two little caterpillars right above his eyes. We're gonna do our first little caterpillar right here. And we're gonna go ahead and shade him in. And we're gonna do our second little caterpillar right here. And then shade that little guy in two. There we go. So now, we're gonna add two lines for his feet. And then the last, last thing, I promise, the last thing this time to finish our gumball outline is his other arm. So gumball's other arm, we're gonna do another little open C and a straight line coming down. We stop right there because that's his torso, that's, those are his pants, and then we bring it around because it's actually behind his body, okay? So there you have it guys, our completed gumball outline. But we have one final, final step, okay? But don't feel any way, this is the best part. Coloring, woo! All right guys, so just like I told you the last time, you don't have to color the exact color that gumball is. Gumball is blue in the show. You know, so I'm gonna go ahead and make my gumball blue because that's my favorite color. But if your favorite color is green, or red, or orange, any color that you love, you can go ahead and make gumball, all right? The only thing that we're gonna do is to remember to separate the colors for his clothing because we notice here that unlike Jake, gumball actually wears clothes. So here he has on his shirt and his trousers. So we're gonna separate the colors to make sure that those are perfect as well. All right, guys, so let's get coloring.
All right, guys, so quick thing here. Remember that gumball has on clothes like I told you guys, so you'd wanna go ahead and make sure you color those a different color. They don't have to be the exact color that he is in a cartoon show. You can make them whatever, but you'd wanna pick a different color besides what you use for his skin, okay? So I'm actually gonna use gray for his pants, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use brown and yellow for his shirt. So you guys can watch me and see what colors I use for wear and you can go ahead and do the same thing, okay? All right guys, that is it. So we finished our coloring and that's the best part. I had so much fun. I hope that you did too. And our amazing drawing of Gumball from The Amazing World of Gumball is complete. I want you guys to stick it up wherever you have it next to your picture of Jake, but wait, don't forget to ask mom or dad to take a picture of your amazing drawing and send it to me so that I can see it here at inittogetherbz at gmail.com. All right guys, so until next episode, I'm Jazz and I'm out. Bye. And just like that, we're one drawing closer to being art legends. If you're like me, this is a big leap forward from stickman drawings. So I'll be showing off my art. We will show off yours too if your parents take a picture and email it to us at the address on the screen. Now is a good time to put away our supplies and get ready for our next ultra fun segment. Kindly stay tuned while we take a short break. Do me a favor, please raise one or even two hands if you love your belly. Since school has been closed, I've averaged about 20 trips to the fridge every day. So I am looking forward to what's coming up next, Chef Beard Kids. This cooking show will teach us how to feed ourselves with minimal adult supervision. Let's get cooking. Okay, my little chefs, you're in tune to Chef Bear Kids! Alright. Okay, Mini Bear, what do you think we'll be cooking today? Spaghetti and meatballs! Spaghetti and meatballs. That's right. I know I love spaghetti and meatballs. I know that is one of Mini Bear's favorite. I hope that my little chefs at home love spaghetti and meatball too because after today you will know how to make your very own spaghetti and meatballs. Let's get, get cooking! cooking. Alright, now ingredients time for spaghetti and meatballs. Here we have one pound of ground beef. You can get this at your local butcher at the supermarket or your nearest Asian grocer. Some spaghetti, two and a half packs of spaghetti. We'll be using some bread, preferably a day's old, um, one egg, some tomato sauce. You can get it in whichever flavor you like. Today we're using some plain tomato sauce, some chopped parsley, and for seasoning we have some garlic powder, a little onion powder, salt, pepper, some basil, one bay leaf, and two tablespoons olive oil. Okay, Mini Bear. Well, the first thing we need to do is to make sure our hands are washed. That's right. Now, second thing, we're gonna get into our meatballs. We're gonna take our ground beef, we're gonna combine it with all our little seasonings, including the egg and our secret ingredient, which is the bread. The bread um, actually gives the meatballs some body, makes it nice and puffy, and it also soaks up all the juices that the, that the ground beef will release so we could get a burst of flavor in every bite. But the first thing we need to do is to put this inside a little processor. You will need adult supervision to do this. So, Mini Bear, I'm gonna do the cutting and you're gonna get to do the easy part. 
What we want to do is to cut this into little pieces that would fit inside our processor. Help me with that one here. Put those inside the processor. What we're going to need is a little bit of water to get this going. I'd say about two to three tablespoons of water. It's about one, it's about two, and that's about three. How does it look? Pretty good. All right. Now what we want to do is to integrate this into our ground beef. Good job. We'll be needing one teaspoon of salt. Get that in. One teaspoon of black pepper. Good stuff. Garlic powder. We love garlic here in our kitchen. So we're going to put two teaspoons of garlic powder. One teaspoon of onion powder. One spoon of basil. And lastly, we're going to include one egg. Now, there are many ways to break an egg. I would suggest for you little chefs at home to get a spoon and gently crack it like that. You don't want to crack it too much. And with your fingers, you open it slowly. And there we have it, all the ingredients for our meatballs. Let's get that stirred up, mini beer. Stir that up, stir that up. Make sure everything is mixed up really well. Mix it up, mix it up. Mini beard is mixing up. I'd say Mini Beard did a pretty good job. And what we want to do is to make sure the meatballs aren't too small or aren't too big. So I say let's do it about the size of a golf ball. Do you know what the size of a golf ball is? That's too small, a little bigger. Okay, my little chefs. Now it's the fun part, to get our little meatballs. And there's no easy way to do this. Just get your hands in there. Come on, Mini Beard, get your hands in there. Get, get a little amount of, of meat, a little, a little more. Something to fit in the palm of your hand. This is a great activity for parents and kids. Um, get all your brothers and sisters involved and just make as much of these little meatballs as you can. Let's see what you have. Whoa, that's perfect. Good job. Good job. Okay, my little chefs at home, just keep rolling until you're all done. And be sure to have fun and smile while you're doing it. That's right. All right, Mini Brian. And here we have, how many meatballs do we have there? Hmm, let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15, good job. All right, now these are set aside and ready to fry. But before we get into that, we want to make our spaghetti, which is fairly simple. You just need a little pot with enough water for the amount of spaghetti that you're doing. Today we're making two and a half pots. 500 grams of spaghetti. And this big old orange thing here is our strainer. Because after the spaghetti is cooked, it needs to be strained. So, let's put this pot on the stove. Okay guys, we put a little bit of salt, now we're gonna give it a little bit of stir. We have to make sure it's boiling and bubbling. So while Mini Beard is taking off our pasta, I'm gonna get the meatballs ready. The first thing you need to do is heat up a nice pan that could hold our meatballs. Or two tablespoons of oil. We'll get that right in the pan and give it a little swirl. Let's wait a little minute for that to heat up and get really hot. Ooh, you hear that sound? That means it's hot and ready. I recommend that you guys use a spoon 
so that the, the, the hot oil does not sprinkle on you and get you burned. Guys, remember not to crowd your pan. If you have a really wide pan that you can fit in all the meatballs, then that is perfect. Otherwise, you can do them one batch at a time. In my case, I'm gonna do it in two batches. So, when this is finished, I can take it out, put it aside on a plate, and I do the next batch. You want it to have this nice little brown color, and then you flip it over. But while this is cooking, our water is boiling. That means it's time for spaghetti. Let's get this into the pot. This part should definitely be done by an adult. Wow, this is looking and smelling so good. Minibeard, what do you think? Mm, that smells so good! <laughs> That's right. Look at that. Can you see that? Excellent. Now that the meatball is ready, it's time to include our tomato sauce. And you want to add this in very gently, okay? There we go. And we want to give this a nice, gentle stir. Remember guys, we're not cooking this on high heat. We're cooking it on medium. This is looking, smelling, and even tasting really, really great. Well, we are going to include one single bay leaf. That is enough. Gives a lot of vitamins, a lot of nutrients, and adds a really good flavor. We want this to simmer on medium for 15 to 20 minutes. Meanwhile, this is simmering and finished cooking. We're gonna be checking our spaghetti. The best way to know if it is cooked right is to simply snip a little piece off and taste it. If it's not, give it a few more minutes. I'll give it about two more minutes. Make sure you always use a safety glove because the pot is really hot. That's looking good. All right. How is this looking, Mini Beard? Looking good. Looking really good. Our meatballs are finished. Smells great. What was your favorite part? Rolling the meatballs. Rolling the meatballs. What was your favorite part at home? You can message us, send us a little message, or drop a comment below and tell us what was your favorite part. But now, I think it's time to plate this. Ha, 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 ha. Well, this is the fun part. Time to plate up and eat this. First thing you want to do is get a nice scoop of spaghetti onto your plate. Give it a little twirl. And now for the best part. You want at least two to three healthy meatballs right on your plate with that lovely sauce. Mm -hmm. mm. Ooh, that's looking really good. Hold on, we're not done just yet. We have a couple little toppings we wanted to add on top of all this. Remember our chopped parsley? Oh yeah, this adds greenery, color, nutrients, and of course, a lot of flavor. Lastly, you want to top it off with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. You like cheese, Mini Beer? I love cheese. Ooh. Look at that. Give it a nice little twirl. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm -hmm. This calls for what? A burger. I hope all my little chefs at home enjoyed the first episode of Chef Bear Kids. Look out for a lot more coming soon. Chef Beard, out. Oh, good job. Surprise! And we are not done yet. We 
we have a special surprise for you. The good, good folks over at VIP Wireless in Belize City has decided to team up with Chef Beard Kids. That meaning every single week, our friends over at VIP Wireless will be giving away a wonderful, amazing prize. And today, Mini Beard, what do we have here to give away? A Jimmy Lee 300. This looks awesome. Guys, this is more than just a Bluetooth speaker. I mean, trust me, it can boom, right, Mini Bear? It is actually a Google device that can give you helpful information, play music for you, and even sing a song for you. Mini Bear, give us a demonstration. Sing a song for us. Finally, it's here. I've been waiting for this chance. Hey, Google. What's the population of Belize? In 2018, its population was 383,071. That's amazing. And you can even get help with your homework. Hey, Google, 5 times 5. 5 by 5 has 25. What? So, my little chefs, if you want to win this amazing device, just send us a really cool picture of your spaghetti and meatballs. Get all your family and friends to like it. And next week, we will be announcing the winner. If you're not the lucky winner of this amazing prize, don't worry. Because you can go over at VIP Wireless and get this bad board for a whopping $100 off with the promo code Chef Beard Belize. Simply walk right up and tell them Chef Beard sent me. And they will take off $100 from this. Boom! Easy as that. So there you have it. Look out for an amazing giveaway each week. Delicious. If I had a job, I would probably try to hire Chef Beard or Mini Beard to be my personal guides in the kitchen. But even based on what we just saw, I will now be able to cook more than just boiled eggs or cornflakes. I think I'm a pro in the making. Today has been very fun, right? I think so. We will go for our final commercial break now, and then we will move into our final segment for the day. Stay tuned. Welcome back to In It Together. Be honest. Raise your hand if all this coronavirus talk and lockdown has made you confused, stressed out, or even annoyed. Everyone has been affected some way or the other, even us kids. We need to make sure we address our feelings and thoughts. So now we move on into Peace Out, which will help us respond well to things that have been bothering us. Enjoy guys and peace out. Good morning, I am Miss Brennan and on today's episode of Peace Out, we will be talking about coping and coping strategies. Coping is the process of developing ways to get through difficult times. When we are having a difficult time, we should try to do something to solve the problem or improve the situation. This is called problem-focused coping. When we are not able to do that, then we should try to change the way we respond to the problem or situation. That is, change our thoughts and our feelings. That is called emotion-focused coping. In Belize and around the world, it is a very difficult time for a lot of people. Children are not in school, and some parents have lost their jobs or are working from home. There is not much that can be done to change or improve the situation, but one way parents and children can change how they respond to the situation is by using grounding. Grounding strategies or techniques help people to reorient to the present moment when worries are too big. They help people connect to their current environment in the here and now instead of focusing on the futures. So today we will be looking at grounding with sights. We're going to be using colors and this one is called 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So what we will be doing is I will be asking you to look around the room and to find things of different colors. Are we ready to begin? Relax your body. Clear your mind and let's start. Can you look around and find five things that are red? OK, 
hey, now can you find four things that are blue? Thank you very much. Now let's look for three things that are green. Okay, two things that are yellow. And one thing that is white. Okay, thank you. So this is a strategy that we can use to get us present in the moment, in the room, right where we are. This grounding strategy can be also used with our senses. So you can look around and find five things that you can see, four things that you can hear, three things that you can taste, two things that you can touch, one thing that you can watch. You can also use ABC around the room. That is, you will look around and start finding things as you go through the alphabets. So you will find something that starts with A, something that starts with B, something that starts with C, and continuing on. This is an easy strategy to get us to stop worrying and to stop paying attention to everything that might happen or that is not happening. That wraps up today's Peace Out session. If you watched and enjoyed, encourage your other friends to also tune in. You can even invite your parents or siblings to watch along with you because we're all in it together. Thanks for watching and peace out. That was so relaxing and fun, right? I used to wonder why I would be feeling so tense or heavy, especially after watching the news or listening to my parents speak about what our country is going through right now. Talking about what we are feeling and knowing what we are feeling are important in making sure we remain happy. It even allows us to know what our parents are feeling, so we don't feel too sad when they seem worried or annoyed. We're really all in it together, and we all want to enjoy Peace out. So, that wraps up In It Together for today. Remember, this is a special show dedicated to us. Schools are closed, but we can still learn together, play together, dance together, draw together, and have endless fun together. With our TVs or tablets or phones, we can link up in a productive way. And it's also a big change from just being at home, idling for most of the day, which has gotten really boring. Remember, this show, Just For Us, will air every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, from 11 in the morning until midday. We air on Channel 7 all over the country and on Facebook at In It Together Belize. Please tell your friends and family members to join in on the fun. We are going through some pretty weird times, but don't worry. We'll get through this because we're in it together. Thanks for tuning in today.